up, you guys? It's Mary. Oh, no. We watch us a like, subscribe, share, and comment. Down below, be today we are going to be talking about love and hip hop Atlanta, you guys. Um, you don't really watch the show, but we saw a viral clip of Scrappy and his mother. Mm, um, yes, I'm sure you guys have seen it, but we're going to link the video down below or whatever. Mm. What did you think? I felt mm -hmm. wrong place, wrong time. I don't know how you really expect to gain your, I don't know how you expect your mother to really listen to you when you're here talking about how you saw her effing and she's high on dope and all this stuff in front of your castmates on TV. Mm -hmm. And then also, I just feel like at some point in your life, you are a grown ass man. Mm -hmm. When are you going to take your mother's breast out your mouth mm -hmm. and stop blaming her for why you are treating your wife the way you do? If you are aware that it's wrong, take your ass to therapy. Mm. Take your mama to therapy with you if you haven't discussed something with her. Mm -hmm. But you hear yelling and throwing tables and all this stuff and like just coming at her sideways. I just felt like it was unnecessary. Mm. And the wrong place, wrong time. You think I want to sit down here and talk about how you saw me do things that I'm not proud of? Mm -hmm. Why would I sit down here and like embrace you with that? I don't know. I just, I feel like... I don't know, I just felt like wrong place, wrong time to be having that conversation mm. and all that stuff. I don't know if he was drunk or what, but I just I, felt I like wrong place, wrong time. Drunk. I don't think he was drunk. He didn't seem drunk to me. Tipsy, whatever. I don't think he was tipsy. And, um, well, when, you know, because when he first started, he was like, drinking do water. Do you know why I treat her the way I treat her? Like, oh, so you're no. making do, an do excuse. you know why it was hard for me or something with you or whatever? Or no, he, he turned to, he, I think he was talking to her or whatever. I can't remember what he said. Mm -hmm. But then he said, do you want to, he said, you know why I am the way I am with her? Mm -hmm. And then she said, yeah, because you saw what I went through. Mm -hmm. He said, no, I saw your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I, lived, I lived in a trap house. Mm -hmm. I lived in a whore house. Yes. I saw my mama doing this. Mm -hmm. I saw my mama doing that. Mm -hmm. I saw my mama bending over. Whatever he said. Mm -hmm. my son coming at me like that it's hard i don't know i feel like it will be kind of hard mm -hmm. especially when some i just feel like maybe mama d she she did the best she could mm -hmm. with what she knew mm -hmm. like i don't think she came from like a really good background a stable home and all this stuff she would have raised her son up in that environment I mean, she did say that to him like you know i but, did what i called and that's probably all she knew like you don't know if she had you don't know if she was molested growing up you don't know if she had to live with her mama being you don't know if she grew up in a whorehouse herself like that stuff kind of goes through the generations yeah. you know what i'm saying so i just felt like you know you are a grown man i feel like you have to have empathy like you can't really get empathy when you don't give it yeah. you know what i'm saying so i just felt like maybe he should have did it at a different time you know what I'm saying? Even if you felt like you really need to stay there, respect your mother and do it at home with the cameras off. Mm. I, I just felt like, I don't know, they always have these really cringy moments in Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, and I just don't know why. Like, even Shekinah sitting down there talking with Erica and Safari about how he's not being a good dad. I'm like, why is that a conversation for all of y'all? Mm. I, I don't understand. I think it is sometimes when it's just you and the person, sometimes you don't have the courage to just say it, like to say the things that have been bothering you for the longest time. And so sometimes it takes like these moments where other people are there um, that you feel maybe safer with. And so you're able to say those things that really, you know, cut deep. You know, mm. now um, with Scrappy, I just, you know, I was, um, for a moment, I was really at a loss because, you know, I did feel really bad for him, you know, just because I just, I, get, I guess I just imagined as he was talking, I was imagined, like I was seeing it was almost as if I was in the room seeing what he, like, it was almost as if I was scrappy seeing what he saw. 
mm -hmm. my mom in this house, you know? And I think, like, as an empath, it's like you feel, you just feel like what other people feel. Like, you put yourself in that position. You, it's not like I have to say, oh, I'm about to put myself in this story now. No, it's just like as they're talking, you're feeling that. And so <laughs> I think that's why I just felt like while, while, you know, as someone who has worked with people who have been through a lot of abuse and stuff and even myself going through abuse, like um, while I do... And I understand probably Mama D, not even probably, that this was, this is what she has seen. This is what she knows, mm -hmm. you know. And this is how maybe she felt like he had to be safe, like he had to be in the room with her. Maybe he doesn't want him, her go, going other places, right? Because he, she's like, okay, I don't want him getting maybe assaulted, molested, or whatever. Maybe this was her way of making sure that he was safe. That's why he was in the room with her while she was doing her own thing. You know, so like she said, she tried the best she could. But I had a lot of empathy for him. You know, while I understand that she also has gone through her own pain and stuff like that, I always feel like when your child comes to you with a pain that they're still carrying from a lifestyle that you lived you know but they're still carrying trauma they have some history of trauma that is caused by a parent's lifestyle or something I just feel like in that moment you just have to hear them you have to even okay so you weren't the mother probably you wanted to be right now you have gotten that knowledge, okay? You got to be a mother now, okay? Maybe you weren't able to do what you should have done then, but in this moment when your son is telling you, okay, yeah, it's not the best moment people are around, but in this moment when your child is crying out, I feel like you have to put aside, sometimes you have to put aside your own pain as a mom to really hear what the child is saying mm -hmm. and to really show empathy for that child you know to just say you know I'm sorry and in that moment I, I don't want I don't think a child wants to hear the excuse of you did the best you could I think in that moment they just want to hear like I see you and I hear you and I'm sorry I get it I'm sorry that's it. That's it. That's all he wants. You yeah. know? I'm sorry. You know? Uh, let him finish talking and then just hug him. I'm sorry. You know? In that moment, you have to take off your armor that you use to cover your heart that um, you have there because of all the pain that you have gone through. For your child, you have to remove it. So that you can show empathy, you can show vulnerability. Because in, in, then, in, in him telling her, regardless how he told her, he was showing his vulnerability in that moment, you know? Now, with Scrappy, um, and I also, I really feel for Mama D, like, I don't even know how you're in a whorehouse, in a drug infested place and you you have a child there right it's just being in that space it's just oh man I do feel bad for her that she had to live such a hard life and I'm, I'm happy that they're not in that space anymore but there's still a lot of trauma from it but for Scrappy I will also say that um, the the trauma that you went through as a child, obviously you recognize. Because you said, do you know the reason why I am the way I am? So there is an awareness that because of this trauma, this is why I do X, Y, Z. Once there's an awareness, 
then Mama D really is off the hook in terms of this is why I'm going to continue to do this. You're aware. So you then so that's where the self-correction comes in. Because of your awareness, you should be self-correcting. The fact that you're still not self-correcting and you're in this place of still blaming, to me now it looks like manipulation as well. Yes, lady. And it looks like you wanting to remain in this space of I'm going to use this as an excuse for my bad behavior. Because you obviously know like you need help. Like when I saw the thing, I was just like, well, I hope he has doesn't have any children. Then you said he got kids. And then I was like, oh boy, well now it's going to continue. So you, because now what you're doing now, oh, I went through this, you know, with grandma. This is why I am. But, you know, the child is going to tell you, turn to you and say, I don't give a fuck what you went through. The fact of the matter is, that you went through that, you know how it fucking feels, and yet this is what you're doing to me as a child. So now that child feels like, I don't care, right? So you're aware, there's an awareness there. Once that awareness is there, um, then you can't now really your mama. you are on the tab for the pain that you're causing to your wife and to your children. You can't really blame her. Yeah. You're not doing this because you, you, you have this trauma that you're aware of. You're aware of it. So you need to make sure that, okay, I went through this. This is what happened. Because of that, I'm not going to do X, Y, Z. And when you see yourself doing it, that's when you should be quick to apologize too. Yeah. And say, you know, because of my history, sometimes I have these triggers. When you do X, Y, Z, it, it triggers me in such and such way, you know? And I am going to strive not to be doing this as well, but I am please asking you to work on this as well because I don't want to be triggered and then you're triggered because we want to have a wholesome home for our children. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm about legacy breaking. The legacy of this trauma I don't want it continuing anymore. It stops with me. And that's what you have to say, you know? And it, it's upon us to be better than our parents. Not just in one way and say, well, my parent never gave me money. At least I give my kids money. But my parent was abused, emotional abusive. I'm gonna continue to do that though. You know what I'm saying? You should be striving in every facet to be better than your parent. The generations must get better. And as we go down the generations, especially generations of trauma, which most of the world has, I promise you, Scrappy, it's not just you. And it's not the most horrible story I have ha heard in my lifetime, okay? However, it's still a horrible story, okay? That's not, not validating what you're saying. But once your awareness is there, that blaming that you do for your parents, that got to go away. It really does. You're aware of what happened, then you just say, it doesn't occur with me. Like, I have gone through my own trauma, but I remember, like, when I got married, I said to my spouse, hey, look, you've had trauma, I've had trauma, and we got to break. There's certain legacies we got to break. You know, certain abuses, like, that cannot even occur on our watch. It just can't occur, you know? So you just have to be willing to do that, you know? Yeah. And we, you know, of course, we're not the best parents at all, by any means. You know what I'm saying? But they're just certain stuff, you know, that you, for your generation, you gotta break. So while I sympathize and empathize, Scrappy, and really feel for you, um, the one thing in this, when he was talking about his pain, I didn't think the women needed to hug him. Let him well, say everything. He, it doesn't matter. This is not the time for you to hug him. He's talking about his mom. He's talking to his mom. Let them handle that. You step back. Let him handle the stuff with his mom. You can't take that. So yeah, yes. deflection. But yeah, it felt like deflecting to me. Like, oh, you know, I'm just going to come slide in here while he's yelling at his mom. And I'm going to be the one to be here for him. You got your own issues, Google. Yeah. He will come to you when he's at, you know, 
want to get at you or whatever. This time is for him and his mom. You know, this time is for him and his mom to get that space that nobody has to hug and comfort him. You know, he has a lot of pain. He's a man. He can handle it. He can handle the pain. Yeah. He can. He can take it. He doesn't need comfort right now. He needs validation from his mom. He needs empathy from her. He needs her to hear him and see him. That's all he needs. He doesn't need your hug. He doesn't. All those women trying to hug him. You know, sometimes you just gotta to the left, to let the left. a man say what he got to say. Yeah. Or let someone who has been abused say what they have to say and stand in the strength of that trauma. They can handle it. He's strong enough to handle it. That's why it's happening in this space. And sometimes, you know, sometimes if they don't happen in the best of times. Yeah. You know? But that's how trauma is, you know? And whenever it manifests itself and it shows itself, this is when I want to discuss it. Oh, well, let's just strap in and get ready for this for this ride and try to be our best selves during it. You know, try to open our hearts up and really hear what the person is saying. So that's all I, you know, I kind of saw from both sides. But at the end of the day, after a while, you know, I mean, I have, you know, relatives who are like, shoot in their 50s still wanted to blame mom and dad like i don't want to hear it yeah because you got kids you have children you can't afford yeah. to still be all broken up and bringing in this infestation into the next generation for them to pass it on to their kids you can't do that yeah you can't do that it's selfish you know so you know what it is, Scrappy, cut it out. That whole stuff that you're doing with wives and children, if you're hurting your wife, I know you're hurting your kids. If you're hurting your baby mama, I bet you're hurting your kids. You know? You know what trauma feels like. Cut that shit out. That's how I feel. But yeah, the yeah. mama, while I feel sorry for you, you just need to hear him. But I liked, you know, I think we saw the end of it. We didn't watch the whole video. I think they, they didn't show the we whole video. We didn't watch the whole episode. But I saw the end where the mama came and she hugged him. You know. And so that's like a beginning on another side of their relationship. Yeah. And the fact that he also says, you know, you know, I, I love you. I love my mom. You know? So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that a blessing. Very interesting. Yeah. He and then no. Erica and um, what's her name? Erica, Mina, and what's his name? Safari. Safari was so cold. You were talking all that stuff. Safari was just looking at you. And at the end, he was just like, I don't know why she's saying all that because we don't see each other the same way. Things have changed. It's over. It's over. You have kids. Because he That's was, the he point. He was just cold. He doesn't care. Um, it's like that guy who sat at the radio show. I think we talked about it not if, too long ago. Yeah. And he was just like, look, if I'm not effing with a mama, then I don't really give an F about the kids. And that's how it is for men. And that and that's what I don't think that's for all men. Certainly not for sure. Because I mean, I've known single fathers who are there, present, and all that. We had a neighbor who was so present in his daughter's life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, we saw that daughter what like three or four times in the week. Yeah. He was very present in her life. That's the only child he had. He was very present in her life. Um, even though he was not together with the mom, and he was very contentious with with the mom. Um, when they broke up and all that stuff. But when he came to that daughter, he was present. So he's not all dads who, who are like that. So I don't care what that man said. Uh, he doesn't speak for all black men because I know a lot of, you know, um, I have a guy who he didn't even know that, that he thought that that was his child for, I don't know, since the child, up until the child was a teenager. Came to find out last minute that the child was not his after how many years but guess what as far as he's concerned that is still his child so he still looks at her as this is my daughter you know what i'm saying so that guy who was talking he does not speak for all uh, black men i mean he was a black guy who, who said that so i'm assuming he's talking about you know these people but he doesn't speak for all all, all black men that's for damn sure and i know that but um Safari though, when you see him the way he's staying, yeah, that man probably speak for Safari. <laughs> yeah. Because he was not even moved at all. 
She was like, I play your music and they dance to your songs. You know something, Erica? Stop you wasting just your time. Focus on giving your children love. Um, don't worry about Safari. Don't try to sell him to the kids. You just strive to just be the best you. You said you have lost weight. You're looking a mess. You know, work on your own self. You know, go to therapy for what you've gone through and go on with your life. Yeah. Hopefully, he will go on with his and leave you alone. Obviously, he's probably saying some things about her. Yeah. You know, um, that's what she was talking about. You need to stop and all this stuff. He did not seem moved. That man is just as cold as cold can be. You see how he treated uh, Nicki Minaj after she had been there for him for how many years? Paying bills and all that like, stuff. Like this guy is he's, cheating he's on her really too. one of the coldest people I think I've seen on television. He, he's just for himself. So I, I, I don't know what he has gone through. He just seems to me like he just really doesn't care. Yeah. He, he really just doesn't care. I, I don't know how far and deep his pain goes. There is a lot of insecurities there. There's a lot of low self-esteem there. But, you know, until he reaches out to go help himself, ain't nothing you can do. Ain't nothing you can do. The man doesn't want to be with the kids. He doesn't want to be with the kids. Like, stop trying to... Don't waste your time trying to sell him to the kids. You make sure you do your part as the mom. But I feel like if you do I mean, that, really, the kids are going to really wonder why okay. he's not around. Because, like, why are you putting his music? Like, you, where is daddy? Yeah. Like, if you just don't even bring him up, yeah. then, hey, then maybe the kids will just forget him. And, and maybe that's what he even wants. And you know something, Erica? The best thing you can do, fix yourself up, get your act together, go get therapy, and um, find yourself a decent human being and be with them. You know? Get you a good man. Get you a good get man. Get you a Russell. Like, like, go talk to Sierra and stuff. You know how she did it and came out of what she went through in the future you know um seek people like that to help mentor you and to guide you you know You'll see how he'll come around but trying to be with the you kids don't have to all the time music for no children like you just do you yes yeah. leave him alone because he looked like he want to be alone he was not moved by a damn thing you said yeah so yeah but yes y'all it's a mary and um, you watch it to like, subscribe, share, and comment down below.